uh, it's a rare thing to actually come to the game, so to speak, and bring up the tail, because I'm actually an opening batsman. And I have had the good fortune of opening the innings with Sunil Gavaskar many years ago, and then uh, Wasim Jafar, actually, for a short bit. And very recently, Ajin Kirane as well. So it's been a long innings for me as well. Uh, before I start, I'd like to say a big thank you to the organizers of this wonderful TEDxC and to all the staff and students of Xavier's Institute of Engineering. Uh, I always believe that you should thank people at home as well. We often forget to do that. And I'd like to thank my wife and my son, Akil, who have really helped me not only for this talk, but also for the trauma center that I'm setting up along National Highway 17. And two particularly young kids who've joined me in the recent past, Ilaf and Sweta, who've helped me with this presentation. Uh, what's the vision? What's the objective? All deserve medical relief, irrespective of their social or economic background, especially in emergencies and accidents. I don't know how many of you have read the Indian Constitution, but you should. Article 47, when you get to it, will say, the duty of the state to raise the level of nutrition and the standard of living and to improve public health. Sadly, only 1% of the total GDP is spent on health in India. China spends twice that amount and is planning to increase it to 3 to 4%. Brazil and, uh, uh, Brazil and Russia also have a GDP of about 3.5% on health issues. You know the population of India, 1.2 million. 70% of this population stays in rural India. It's really sad for me to put this slide up, but I had to put it up because I wasn't sure if I would be able to speak about all these things, and it's an emotionally draining thing to mention that 50% of us Indians don't have proper shelter. 70% have no access to decent toilets. 35% of households don't have nearby water sources. When I worked in the inter uh, during my internship uh, in a village known as Masawan near Palghar, it was 11 kilometers from Palghar. I used to go up down every day from Bombay. And it would take me three hours to go up, three hours to come down. And I felt this was nothing because there were families, villagers, commuting five miles a day, carrying just simple water to drink. Uh, they don't have secondary schools. 40% of these villages don't even have decent roads. So I'd like to echo the sentiments of JFK. Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. So just imagine, my idea was to set up trauma centers. In fact, we've started work. You can see a little bit of the work there. It's uh, the foundation that's just being laid. There's an ambulance service already in stock. And these are some of my friends and colleagues in that area. And how did we do this? This is at a village called Kambla. It's about five kilometers from Mahad on the way to Goa. Uh, we've done this with the coordination with the Konkan Rural Development Charitable Association and the Kazi Jal. Uh, you'll be amazed at the number of local people who come up and support us whenever we try and do something like this. And uh, this whole thing has been supervised by Anjuman Darmand. The small poster that you see below is the Shaukat C. Chagla Memorial Trust. And I thought I'd start a trust in my father's memory because I have so many people who have a lot of goodwill for me. And I really don't know what to do with that. So I thought if I started a trust, it'll be easier for me to handle all the, all the goodwill that comes my way. And I can root a lot of stuff that I do through this trust. I'd like to digress a bit and uh, tell you something about this pyramid of knowledge. Now, I'm a neurosurgeon, okay? And I must have started here as well, starting from school. Then you come up the ladder and you come up to college, and then you go into an engineering college or a medical school, and you keep climbing this pyramid. What's the idea? What's the essence? What am I trying to tell you? Lots of things. First, when you're looking at this pyramid, when you're at the bottom, there's a lot to learn. But as we start growing, now I'm a neurosurgeon. To tell you honestly, I have no idea what artificial intelligence is. I know we use it for making robotics. But trust me, I, don't, I wouldn't trust it at all. I'd rather use my own brains than use anyone else's. No one, not yours, mine and mine alone. So, you know, you can imagine now, if I have to scale this pyramid of knowledge, I would want to climb higher and higher and higher, obviously learning less and less and less. But if I decide to now become a musician like Nush, or if I want to become 
a computer engineer or I want to become a lawyer, the path that I need to travel from one end to the other is much less. So I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. If you're at the base of the pyramid, yes, law and medicine is miles and miles apart. But as you scale this pyramid of knowledge, you'll come to know that there's a very small bit that you have to travel to even change your profession. So why trauma centers on highways? Well, this is my passion. This is my first wife, my humber. She's uh, still alive. She's 1959 born. I've driven her from here to Trivandrum. People wouldn't want to drive her around the city of Bombay. 2,600 kilometers. And that's, most of it is National Highway 17. It was a lovely highway to drive on. The roads were well maintained. They were narrow, but the traffic was less. This is a trip that I made to Kathmandu a few years before that, in an ordinary fiat with some friends. Now, why trauma centers again? Because of this. Road traffic accidents. You can imagine the number of lives lost in this. This is the worldwide figure. In India, though we have only 1% of the world's population of cars or vehicles, we have 10% share of accidents and victims that die because of road traffic accidents. Look at this. Head injuries related to road traffic accidents. India, 3.2 million road traffic related injuries in 2010. India has the highest number of road traffic related deaths in the world. Each year, there are 1.5 million new disabled people due to road traffic accidents. It's crazy, isn't it? Now you can see, these are figures from BBC. This is in 2005. Uh, you have an accident rate of 35 per thousand vehicles. Again, the highest in the world. The mortality has increased and it's still increasing. I'll show you some more figures. And you can see that this is the figure in 2005. 70% of them are head injuries so related to neurosurgery. These are more recent figures. You can see 137,000 killed due to road traffic accidents. 2013, one death every four minutes. So in the, in the space of my talk, which would be between 16 to 20 minutes, four or five people are dead. It's crazy, absolutely crazy. These are gory facts. Maharashtra has the highest number of road accidents in the country. Look at that, Hindustan Times, 2013. Travelers, that drives travelers away from National Highway 17. National Highway 17 is one of the most picturesque highways that one can take. But unfortunately, it's one of the most ridden with accidents. Some more gory facts. Death trap. Most accidents, fatalities reported in National Highway 17. Hindu Sun Times, again, 2013. The Hindu, 37. I don't know if, how many of you remember this. How many of you remember that 37 people were killed on this bus fall that had fallen down this ravine? This is the ravine. And this bus had fallen down. All these accidents on National Highway 17. This is another one, more recent, 2015. This bus skidded off, rammed into another ST bus. You can imagine, probably the worst drivers in the country. Suffice to say, trauma-related deaths will be a third leading cause of death for all age groups. For India, road traffic accidents would be a major killer. Estimated an economic loss, assuming that you deal with money all the time. 2% of the GDP. And unfortunately, most of them, again, related to head injury. So what's this point that I'm trying to make? Parents of teenagers and teenagers themselves worry about a lot of things, drugs, sex, poor choice of friends. But the activity that causes most harm to teenagers is none of the above. It's road accidents. The leading cause of death between 16 and 20, you can imagine. If you've lived past that 20, you're safe, probably. National Highway 17. Now they're going to rename it, thank God, because it really gives me shivers when I just talk about National Highway 17. And they're going to call it National Highway 66. I don't know if you've heard the song, Route 66. It's a lovely song. Nevertheless, I hope it just stays at 66 and not 666. <laughs> anyway, so this National Highway 17, just to get a few facts clear, runs parallel to the Western Ghats. It connects Panvel to the city of Adapali in Cochin. And it runs through four states, Maharashtra, Goa, Karnataka, and Kerala. See these routes, very scenic, but dangerous. Many blind curves, no dividers, awfully narrow. You have all types of traffic commuting on these roads. You have a bullock cart, you have a small bike, you have an auto rickshaw, you have a fast car, you have a truck, and you have, a, I, I, that, that's a little dim, maybe the lights are too powerful. 
You can see three people in the family all on one bike, no helmets. So most of the places in our country are connected by roads, yes, but look at the quality of roads. And with one shower, this is the end result. So what is the, the end point? The end point is the Indian public are subjected to multiple road accidents. And these road accidents, unfortunately, just to repeat and drive home the fact, the ministry knows this. It's not that it's not known to the ministry. And it's all in the WHO as well. So we don't have trauma centers. There's no trauma care. There's no pre-hospital care. There's no EMS, which is emergency medical services. Transportation is usually done by private vehicles or taxis. Now we have an ambulance service called the 108. But try calling them up and see how long they take to come. Can you imagine, I've gone down National Highway 17 umpteen number of times with the idea of, let me scout this area. I went to a place somewhere in between Ratnagari and Bombay called Lanja. There's a primary health center bang on the smack on the, on the main road, on the National Highway 17. There's not a single MBBS doctor there. We're pushing so many medical students out each year as doctors. We can't get one doctor to man this. It's appalling. You won't believe, I've traveled 500 kilometers down National Highway 17. Not a single neurosurgeon in that entire lot. 500 kilometers, not a single neurosurgeon. And we have 200 neurosurgeons in Bombay City. So what did we do? I looked at what the government has done. They have on paper, trauma center here, trauma center there. You might read even a couple of days back in the Times of India, trauma center at Mahad. Everything is on paper, everything's in the media, but nothing really happens for, the, for you and me, as they say, the Aam Admi. See, this is what they want us to do. Of course, they've made a highway between Pune and Bombay, and they have a four-lane road, but you see the number of accidents there? You can imagine the bus, the Shivneri bus will be in the fastest lane, and it happens every day. You have a police patrol, but nothing happens to the bus or the Shivneri person. I don't know who owns it. Nevertheless, so this is what you, the basic road that you need. You need a divider, you need at least two lanes, you need the trucks or the heavy vehicles on the slow lane, and things like that. Nevertheless, what do we do? We thought of coming up with local support, which I thought, and Mahad being the most frequent site for these accidents, I thought of developing a tra trauma care program, by which, with my experience of 20 odd years in a setup which is run by the Bombay Municipal Corporation, I have a vast experience of dealing with head injuries. And we also teach a lot of such people who come from all over the world to us. So I thought of mustering some local support, getting them to KM, teaching them everything about emergency care. And they'd go back, we'd fund these guys as well, and they'd look after and man these centers. So what did we do? We made a plan based on our strengths and our deficiencies. What are the strengths? We've got loads of manpower. We've got people who are skilled. We've just heard such talented talks for today. I think the Indian mind is very sharp. So I don't think there's a problem about that at all. I don't think we are also lazy. We're quite hardworking and we want to do what we want to do. So manpower is certainly very high. The problem is gadgets. A lot of, you know, the kind of direction is very poor. Uh, so I just thought these are very small things that have to be put into this cogwheel. So that's what we've done. And I've tried to get this sorted out, starting with Mahad as the pilot plan. If we work through Mahad and we can manage to do this, we can go every 50 to 100 kilometers and set up these small powerful units, not very expensive, with local help. And if anything else is required, we can fund them ourselves. I always believe that India is a socialist country. So with the local support, we have this. This is the game plan, the feasibility, the me medical staff assessment, the financial planning, the physicians, the local medical support, how to develop the staff there, then also to make a regional trauma center, and then to find out how to fund and support it. So these are small guidelines which we start even training our, uh, our ambulance drivers, our ambulance attendants, on how to safely transport patients, how to prevent the second injury, so to speak, and to get them in this golden hour, which is a separate lecture on its own. So what's the second accident? For example, if there's a man who's unconscious, lying on the road, he's going to feel completely compromised because he doesn't know what he's doing. And the, and the biggest foreign body for him in his mouth is his tongue because it gags him. And you know, if you don't breathe for three minutes, your brain is practically dead. 
So even a small thing like turning the patient onto his side, you know, making sure he's lifted in the right manner, probably save lives. You know, if you vomit, you could aspirate the vomit, it goes into your chest, and the same problem again. So these are small examples of what we call as a second accident. The first accident is the road traffic accident, and this is what happens when the patient either vomits or is lying unconscious for quite some time without any attention. So coming back to the center in Mahat, these are the few friends that have roped up with me, and we've already got an ambulance in place, and the, and the center is coming up. So for me, this is not the beginning nor is this the end. But as Sir Winston Churchill said about the World War II, because this is a war in a way, this is probably the end of a beginning. The essence of life is to serve. The country and its society is judged by how it looks after its poor, the sick, and not by the affluence or the riches it exudes, the health of its people and the education standards it sets, where each life is precious. I'm really not sure whether I should use the letter E in that presentation or not, in this country sometimes. I'd like to end here, but before I end, I believe to achieve something beyond limits, which is the theme of today's talk, one must do things without expecting anything in return, least of all monetary rewards. So in conclusion, I'd like to say a few words. Words that are not just enough, will not suffice. We must act and act quickly and ideas will not work unless we do. Thank you very much. <laughs>